Another massive NASCAR free agent is already off the market and Chase Elliott has a new family. How's it going, y'all? My name is Eric. Welcome to Out of the Groove. Happy Friday, y'all. I hope you're having a wonderful week qualifying. The duel's already in the books tonight. The Craftsman, almost a camper, the Craftsman Truck Series makes their season debut. I am looking forward to that. The sun just comes out. See, I, I'm using natural light to film this from my hotel room. <laughs> Gonna try not to be blinded by that. Yesterday, a couple big Cup Series news stories broke. We'll start with, I guess, the smaller one, Chase Elliott. NASCAR's most popular driver has a new sponsor, and it's a it's a recognizable one. Coca-Cola is now the official drink sponsor of Chase Elliott. Chase Elliott is a part of the Coca-Cola family of drivers. I don't know why. This image just feels weird to me. It's going to take me a long time to get adjusted. Maybe it's because Chase Elliott began his NASCAR Cup Series career as a Pepsi driver representing their Mountain Dew brand. Or maybe it's because the last two years he's been sponsored by A-Shock Energy Drink, uh, a new energy drink that I believe was either supported by Dr. Pepper or maybe they just had a, a distribution deal with the Keurig Dr. Pepper company. Either way, not Coke. To now see Chase Elliott in the Coca-Cola red colors, just, I don't know, it's just gonna take some getting used to, but I'm happy for Chase Elliott and I'm happy to see the Coca-Cola family of drivers expanding for a change. I feel like for years now, we've just seen drivers fall off. Like when Ryan Newman retired, they didn't immediately go out and try to find a replacement. I think coming into this year, if nothing's changed, it's Joey Logano, Austin Dillon, Daniel Suarez, and Denny Hamlin. Add Chase Elliott into the mix, I believe. That's a pretty big splash. Coca-Cola, of course, has their little fingerprints all over NASCAR. They're one of the sport's premier partners. But this deal makes a lot of sense. Uh, they're based in Atlanta, Georgia, of course, have a huge history, presence, and legacy in that city and state. Chase Elliott from Dawsonville, Georgia. Chase Elliott's father, Bill. Bill Elliott was once sponsored by Coca-Cola as well. Even Jeff Gordon, who Chase Elliott effectively replaced when he came to the Cup Series, was once sponsored by Coca-Cola. I think his Pepsi era is far more recognizable, but yeah, Jeff Gordon was, in fact, once a Coca-Cola driver. So I guess it's all come full circle, uh, but yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing more red on Chase Elliott's car over the next couple of seasons. I hope they bring back some of those funny uh, Coca-Cola family commercials where all the drivers are interacting or doing some sort of skit. Uh, they had some pretty good ones not all that long ago, so I hope they're able to bring those back. Hey, cutting in real quick, I'm at the track now and actually just got done watching the Garage 56 NASCAR's Le Mans entry reveal their paint scheme for the first time. I'll insert that clip here. Looks great. I love the, the subtle American flag on the hood. You got the Chevy logo, very prevalent. The NASCAR 75th diamond on the nose. I like it. And the headlights work. Check out this photo, the headlights work. I can confirm, I've seen it in person. This is exciting. Also heard that they uh, maybe up the horsepower bit for this car, you know, a little bit. They kept talking about how it's gonna sound when they finally fire up the engine. Uh, I think we're gonna like what we hear, for sure. Now this is just for Le Mans, just for the 100th anniversary race this summer in France, but uh, still pretty cool that NASCAR's a part of it. Good look at the, the paint scheme. Now let's get to the biggest story that came out of the NASCAR Cup Series garage yesterday. Ross Chastain isn't going anywhere. Get used to seeing the watermelon man in the number one car yesterday during a press conference at Daytona. Trackhouse announced that they have signed a multi-year contract extension with driver Ross Chastain. This comes literally a day after the team announced a multi-year extension with their other driver, Daniel Suarez. Just like the Suarez deal, Trackhouse didn't offer any additional specifics, although uh, Ty Norris did say that Ross Chastain's beard will be gray by the time this deal is up. So I don't know, is that a three, four, five year deal? That sounds pretty long-term to me, considering Ross Chastain is, is only what, 29? Oh, he's 30 now. Oh, well, still probably at least a three, four or five year deal. Don't know for sure. This is huge for Ross Chastain. I don't want to parrot exactly what I said about Daniel Suarez a couple days ago, but Ross Chastain is a driver who's never had much stability. In many ways, he's kind of a nod to NASCAR drivers from years past. He comes from watermelon farming. That's his family business. They're farmers in Florida. They used the money they had to go racing, Ross Chastain had success, began to get opportunities. And when he started to get those higher and higher profile opportunities, he was selfish because he knew that 
his next opportunity may not ever come. He didn't have millions of dollars of family corporate sponsorship behind him. His perseverance has paid off. He's in the NASCAR Cup Series and last year came up one spot short of a NASCAR Cup Series championship. So uh, I think Ross Chastain is a story a lot of race fans can get behind, can support, even if they don't always love the way he races on the track. It's fun, it's entertaining, it's wild, it's unpredictable, but sometimes, depending on who you ask, goes a little too far, has to rein it in. But I'm really happy for Ross Chastain. I think this is a good deal. I think Trackhouse, uh, they're still really new, a really young team, a team that's only had one good season. I think we forget this. In 2021, their first year when they were still running the Gen 6 and they had to buy all the parts and pieces from RCR, Trackhouse struggled. They were not a good team in 2021. I think Suarez was like mid-20s, 25th in points, broke a lot of parts and pieces. They didn't have consistent speed. Last year, 2022 was the first year Trackhouse looked like a legit competitive organization. And it was also the first year of the next gen. And I think it's safe to say Justin Marks, Ty Norris, that whole team, they really bought into the sport based on the promise of the next gen. They bought into the idea of a spec car better than other teams. And they had success last year. I expect them to continue having similar success going forward, but it, it was just one year. Teams have great years and then struggle for a few more years. That does happen. But you know, if you're Ross Chastain, I think it's worth whatever risk there is. Because like I said, he has not had stability since getting into NASCAR. He's always had to look over his shoulder or look forward desperately through any crack he can find to find his next opportunity. He has a team that believes in him. A competitive team, if they're offering you a long-term deal, I think he would have been foolish to turn it down. I also think one of the reasons we've seen so many drivers sign extensions in recent weeks, Briscoe a couple weeks ago, this week it's been Alex Bowman, Suarez, and now Chastain. I think part of it, at least a small part, has to do with a team like Stuart Haas Racing, who may be kind of desperate right now. They signed Briscoe to that extension. They've got him and Ryan Priest, two young drivers who don't have a ton of cup experience, or at least not experience in competitive cars. And then they got two old guys, Kevin Harvick, who's about to retire, and Eric Almarola, who also may retire this year, or probably next year. They've got holes to fill, and they've got an owner, Gene Haas, with some pretty deep pockets. So could they have made a run at a guy like Ross Chastain if the track house negotiations faltered at all? I would say maybe. I would say almost definitely. So Justin Marks' track house knew what they were doing. They had to get a deal done with both of their key cornerstone drivers done early. Silly season has gotten a head start and really hasn't been all that silly thus far. I also wonder if the new agreement between NASCAR and the teams, the new revenue sharing agreement, the new TV contract, if that's played a role in this sudden wave of contract extensions. You know, last week we talked about how Denny Hamlin, Adam Stern, writing for the Sports Business Journal, both believed that NASCAR and the teams were getting closer to reaching an agreement. Both sides seemed optimistic. So maybe behind the scenes, Trackhouse, Hendrick, Stuart Haas, they know what those numbers are going to look like beginning in 2025, and they're now comfortable signing their drivers long-term, planning for the long-term future. Last couple years, it's been hard to plan long-term in NASCAR. You've had so many changes. The next gen car, knowing that the TV agreement's up after 2024. Now, that some of those scenarios are becoming clearer. They know how much the next gen costs roughly. They know, maybe are starting to know what the next TV deal and what the revenue sharing is gonna look like. Now they're comfortable signing their core drivers to long-term contracts once again. I do think that's part of it as well. So there's a couple of different factors. End of the day, I'm happy for Ross Chastain. I think he's in a good home, a team that's gonna be competitive. Hopefully one day they're a consistent championship contender. We'll see if your track house it's great to have all your ducks in a row. I think Ross Chastain is really, really good. Last year, I think we think of Ross Chastain as this really flashy up and down driver, but he had 21 top tens last season. That was most in the NASCAR Cup Series. He led this series. In many ways, he was the, the face of consistency. He didn't win a single race in the playoffs, but made it all the way to the championship for at Phoenix and almost won the Cup Series championship. And he did that largely on consistency. I think Trackhouse is in a good place right now. You've got Daniel Suarez, who I believe is a, a B, B plus talent, but is an A, A minus when it comes to selling sponsorship and marketing. And then you have Ross Chastain, who's I think probably an A minus talent, but is a B plus or so as far as marketability and sponsorship. I mean, they've sold pretty much every race for the one and the 99 cars the last year, and I assume going into this year as well. So that's I mean, that tells you what you need to know. They're marketable. You can sell for them. Their personalities are endearing. The fans support them by and large, and they both can drive. 
especially Ross Chastain, who I think emerged as kind of the leader of Trackhouse last year with his on-track results. There are two drivers too that I think both have chips on their shoulders. We know all about Daniel Suarez. He comes from Mexico, had some good years in the lower series with Toyota and Joe Gibbs Racing, but when he got to Cup, he just didn't According to him, at least to have the support he felt he needed, bounced around a bit, he's finally found a home. He's got a chip on his shoulder to prove Stuart Haas, to prove JGR, to prove everyone in the past wrong. Ross Chastain, I believe, is the same way. He's used to fighting for every spot, for every opportunity. He is, he is aggressive, sometimes a little too aggressive, you can argue. But in modern NASCAR, I do think aggression often wins out over um, passiveness or <laughs> politeness. I don't know, I think you gotta be a little mean these days to win consistently in NASCAR. And I think Ross Chastain, he's got that chip on his shoulder. So I like this move for both sides. I wanna know what you guys think down in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed, please leave it a like. If you're new to the channel and you love stock car racing, hit that subscribe button down below. The Daytona 500 and the start of the 2023 season is right around the corner. And thank you as always to my amazing Patreon supporters. Trucks are tonight. I will see you again very, very soon. Hope you have a wonderful Friday. Take it easy, y'all.